All right, uh, welcome everybody again to another installment of Horrible Blender Tutorials. I'm Ostier Grimm, and I just wanted to go over um, something I posted l a few weeks ago. Uh, was my preface to this tutorial number three, um, which was talking about standard sensors. Understanding that uh, a lot of information about your camera is uh, online and you can find out about it. Um, so what this was going about was how to understand what your camera was doing and um, your sensor size with the uh, the lens information and all this other stuff because I wanted to get into how to use the camera in Blender properly so you had a, a good render and uh, understanding some of the physics behind it well not really physics but understanding the 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 way cameras work and the lens and, and all that stuff. Um, I've also uploaded a new logo. I hope everybody likes it. I really thought it was cool. Um, so here we go um, into my tutorial here. I set up Quick Scene, which is just basically a mountain range here, um, and it's a little desert scene with some broken glass in here. I've done a bunch of uh, recording or um, renders of this to kind of uh, show what what the different settings do. I'm going to go into here and kind of show you uh, where to make these changes uh, within Blender to get the the same aspect that uh, I'm showing today. So with your camera selected in Blender you can go in here and go to the camera object data and in here is the focal length, the sensor size, and the aperture, and the, all of the depth of field stuff. These are the main things I'm going to uh, work with today. Um, so first to understand, um, the sensor size is going to be, uh, the effectively, is the opposite of what the focal length does. So just keep that in mind that I'm not going to actually do anything with the sensor size and everything will be adjusted with the focal length. But the sensor size does matter if you're going to um, render something and attempt to make it look like a real camera. So the sensor size does matter um, when you're doing a render uh, along with the focal length. So just keep that in mind. But uh, for the examples I'm going to go through, um, the focal length is all I'm really adjusting along with the depth of field stuff. Um, so in here with Blender, you can actually see on the scene where your uh, focal length uh, is actually going to be at. So here's my camera. This is where my focal length is actually you know, pointed to. And uh, I'm not really going to, well, I might show a little bit of it because I've got it at, actually I'm sorry, that's the distance, but your focal length is affected by where your distance is and all that, um, your focal point. So in photography, depth of field is affected by multiple factors, or two main factors, which is the focal length and the aperture size, which we have here. And the aperture size is generally affected by light and uh, your sensor sensitivity or in film it's your uh, film sensitivity or the ISO rating because if you don't have enough light and you have a low um, a low sensitivity on your sensor or you have a low sensitivity in your film you would need to open up the aperture to get more light in or adjust uh, how long your, your uh, your camera is going to be exposing that film or sensor and that uh, that actually changes how much depth in your scene you've got so I'm gonna go ahead and go in here to these uh, rendered items that I've done I'm gonna post these on on my blog um, so first I'm gonna actually open up one. So here 
this was a focal length of 32, a sensor of 32, and an aperture of 0 0.03. This is a normal uh, close-up picture with good lighting, and um, you can see a good focus on the object in focus here. Um, with depth of field, you can actually um, emphasize size. Um, as you can see, the mountain range in the background is out of focus and it gives that, that, that distance effect and also size. You can tell that this is really, really small in relation to those mountain ranges. So it's something, something to keep in mind here as I go through this. Um, here is, I'm going to go and find the zoomed image. So this is an, what would normally appear to be a zoomed image. Um, this is a focal length of 63, uh, same sensor size, and an aperture of 0 0.03. So the focal length, the larger you go, the smaller the angle of view, which makes it appear to be a zoomed image. Um, so think of using a zoom lens on a camera. You're going to be zooming in, and that that brings everything closer together in the 2D view. Um, and w with that, that will actually affect your depth of field um, normally within photography. So you need to keep that in mind when you're creating a, a render. And if you're going to create something that looks like it's zoomed in, you're going to want to make a shallower um, depth of field here, which is caused by the aperture, to uh, make things in the distance blur out or you know, make things in the, f the, the foreground blur out. That makes this appear smaller and everything in the background appear larger. So that's just something you need to keep in mind is the, the zoom on your camera, your virtual camera in Blender, and how that affects your objects in view. had a wide angle here yeah here's a wide angle view and this is more like um, uh, the cameras that we I've been playing with recently uh, what are they called yeah I don't have them camera I've been playing with recently has a, has a wide angle and this is what you you get more um, this actually has a really shallow uh, depth of field and you won't really get a shallow depth of field with a real with realistic uh, wide angle lens um, so just something else to keep in mind and I'll, I'll go into another picture where you've got a, a, a wide angle and a, a more of a deep um, depth of field and you'll be able to tell the difference and how it looks more realistic but this looks pretty good um, one thing to note when I was doing the the, uh, the materials here and the textures I wasn't really focusing on on the quality of the texture I did want to kind of give it some some graininess but not too much um, but that's not really what I was focusing on here so just bear that in mind with these um, so here we go I'm gonna go into Length of eight. So the lower we go, the wider the, the angle here. This is actually a really, really wide uh, shot. And again, this is a very shallow depth of field, which we wouldn't want in a realistic render of this. Um, you'll want a, a deeper uh, depth of field. So this was just to kind of show you that the, the focal length affects the angle of view here. Now, with that in mind, the sensor size itself, if we go back to Blender, the sensor size is the inverse effect of the focal length. So the lower you go here is as if you went higher with the focal length. But you want to keep that in, in relation to uh, a physical camera if that's what you're working with, um, with regards to having a... Um, a real picture and a render that you want to combine. Um, 
So keep that in mind. Let's close some of these down. So this is more realistic, this one with the, the focal length of 32 and the aperture of uh, 0 0.03. Uh, of course, this depends on how much light is in your scene and uh, your, your actual um, reference image for that. So with that done. Now, affecting the aperture... I'm going to go into uh, how the depth of field looks with in regards to the aperture. And I want the focal length of 32 and aperture of 1. So here's a, a pretty deep depth of field, which you can see a lot of uh, stuff, or the, a lot of the scene that's closer to the camera, more in focus, and a little bit further out is in focus. This is also pretty realistic. It might be a little too deep, um, but it also sharpens up the mountain range in the background, which is uh, pretty good. I like this this view. It was uh, pretty clean. And here's our. Uh, Here's our shallow depth of field, which is a little too shallow um, for the focal length, I believe. Um, again, if you're going to do a shallow uh, depth of field, you want to make it look like it's zoomed in. Um, that's more of what's going to happen. Um, if you're doing something really small, if you're looking at a really minuscule object, um, you'll want to zoom that in um, and increase the focal length pretty big um, while uh, making that uh, that aperture larger also to keep the focus um, on a sharper point in the image and that's what this kind of does here and here's a really deep um, aperture which was uh, 0 0.001 and this actually kept pretty much everything in focus except for the sky um, so you can finely detailed uh, see the uh, the fine detail in the the mountain range and all of the glass and all of the 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 dirt and sand that's closer to the camera which I didn't really like um, even though it does give good good detail on, on the, um, the mountains and the glass it's way too sharp for a real camera so that's just that's as if you had done no deep depth of field to anything um, which is really unrealistic so after that I also played with the distance now these are all a distance of 120 which kept the mountain range in focus um, so we'll start with the 32 which is a pretty shallow um, I'm sorry yeah pretty shallow depth of field and a good uh, good width of the uh, the film here, or the the view, um, so you can see that the the glass in the foreground is blurred out, which is normal, and you can clearly see the mountain range in the background, which is about accurate um, with in regards to seeing a camera this close to glass. Um, this is what you'd really see, depending on your aperture size in a real film or real photograph. So that, I liked this picture. This was really good. Um, and the 63. Now this was zoomed in. Now I left the actual rotation of the camera uh, still, so I didn't change anything other than the, the focal length and the distance and the aperture. Um, this is again more of what you would see: zoomed in, 
and something in particular is in focus not the foreground but in this case it's the background which if I adjusted this image to where you saw more of the, the mountain range would again look pretty realistic to what a camera with a zoom zoom lens would would look like um, looking into the mountains in the background here's a little bit wider um, again the the focal length is on the mountains or the, the focal point is on the mount mountains in the background um, blurring stuff in the foreground which in this case probably wouldn't happen as much with a camera of this wide of an angle you would get a lot more of the foreground and the background and my last one of these is the really wide which in this case you would see probably a lot more in focus here with a real camera with these lenses or this type of lens but I just wanted to show off you know what you can do with blender and uh, you know how realistic you can go with with an image and adjusting those settings um, can really uh, play with what the image is going to look like in the end and you can you can see it here you know the 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 focal length how it affects the the perspective so that's that's one of the main things about this was just i wanted to kind of show you how the camera works and what to expect uh, with some of these settings again it, you need to understand um, with photography a darker scene is going to have a lot more in focus just because in a real film uh, scene you're going to have the aperture pretty large which makes more things in focus uh, within a scene um, now to, to, to fake that you're going to need a lot of emitters but keep things dark um, to I want to say like if you wanted to have like a romantic scene with uh, you know lights kind of blurred out in the in the background and, and your your main uh, focal point is people in the foreground like a portrait um, you'll need those emitters to be kind of bright and you'll need some light on the the main character or the the main focal point and you can adjust that that in blender and you can actually fake it really well to where if you were using um, a real camera you're not going to get that too accurate and it's a much more difficult um, unless you had pretty good lenses and, and good uh, light going through them so that's how you that's that's how you play with this and you can make a pretty good scene um, you know uh, keeping things in focus that you want in focus making things that are in the background out of focus and it's just things you need to keep in mind um, when when you're doing a render, a scene, um, what is in focus? How is the camera going to act? Um, so some other things here within Blender. Now this isn't actually part of the camera, it's more of the film itself. The exposure is the image brightness scale. The exposure actually adjusts all of the emitters um, basically like a multiplier. So exposure of one is what you're getting and uh, this doesn't really translate directly to a film camera exposure in a film camera is the length of time that that the uh, the shutter is open and that gives you or can give you a lot of motion blur if you're doing film um, and give you more light but it it can give you a lot of blur and, and this isn't uh, indicative of what real film would do so this is basically just the multiplier on your emitters which would be your, your world scene um, or your world background and um, any other emitter planes or objects that are emitting light uh, the Gaussian width here um, this is how basically the last step of the render it will put a simple blur 
on your, your, your image to where if you had no Gaussian, it would be way too sharp and you'd see sharp edges on, on each pixel. This just kind of blends it a little bit um, to give you a, a smoother transition in pixels. Um, it's a Gaussian blur and it, it can make your render seem a little bit more realistic to a camera if you have it up a little bit more. Um, one seems about right for me. Um, I normally go down to 0.7 because I want a sharper image. Um, so if you if you intentionally want something fake, um, but to be a sharp, sharp, sharp render, you can drop that down to 0.7 or 0.5, and you'll get really sharp renders. Um, but understand that that is a that does appear fake, um, just like you would see here in in your uh, uh, your previews. You you see the, these lines that. Uh, is really vectorized and has, you know, no, um, no blur to it or no smoothness to this line, and that's what you'll see when when you don't when you turn this down. If you turn it up too high, it also makes can make your render look pretty bad because it's a little too blurry. Um, so that's just keep that in mind when you're when you're doing renders. So back here, one last thing I wanted to touch on was this panorama option. What panorama does is, let's see if I can do it here. You won't see it in your preview or in a uh, wireframe. But if you go to rendered, what that does is it basically turns off your focal length, it turns off your aperture, and it turns off your, your distance and your depth of field. And what it does, is it's rendering here, is it makes a full, full screen uh, panorama shot that you could then save this view and import it into uh, something else that might use um, a, a full shot like this. Uh, actually, I'll have another one here. Here's the full shot. That might use this so that you could then, um, and this isn't really going to be the, the correct way to do this, but you could do a 3D kind of rotation around the entire panorama. And if you had a full scene here, you could actually render this out, import it into another program, and look around the entire scene, which I think is really cool. Um, but understand if you're going to use this, it does turn off everything. There is no depth of field, um, and there is no um, uh, focal length. So, I mean, you, you have to turn off all that to get a good render. So to kind of recap, um, some things to keep in mind is you're going to use... If, you, if you're going to do a zoomed image, like going down to a focal length of 64, you're going to want to have a uh, an aperture size that's pretty uh, large to keep a shallow depth of field. 10 is about right. So you want to go up to three, maybe five, point, point zero 0.05 to keep this uh, this depth of field really, really shallow. Now, if you're going to go down to a wide angle, let's take it down to eight, you're not going to want a shallow depth of field. So you're going to want to bring this down to point, uh, point 0.1. Yeah, point 0.1, and probably take the distance out to you know, halfway in your scene. You know, you, you will want some close-up stuff to be blurred out, and uh, keep a lot of the stuff in the distance uh, pretty sharp. That's what's going to happen with a, a wide-angle lens, unless you intentionally try to bring it in. So, back to to light. If you have a dark scene you're going to have a, um, a pretty normal 
uh, focal length, but your uh, your aperture size is going to be actually larger, but it's uh, in here the radius is smaller. So you're going to have a, a pretty deep depth of field. Point. If you have a dark scene, if you have a bright scene, that's when you can be able to bring up the the um, the aperture and bring it closer and keep things sharp in in the in what you want to keep sharp. So that's pretty much it. You know, I've kind of gone over everything that the camera can do. Um, keep in mind, like I said, you want to use this similarly to what your real camera um, has for the sensor size, the focal length. If you're going to use your real camera as a reference image or something that you're going to blend together. So when you do that, you have um, things in the distance are blurred out properly by depth of field. Things that are closer together or closer to the scene are in focus and that can keep everything um, in sync and keep it uh, fluid and uh, it, it takes a lot of practice to, to kind of get this correct um, but you you want to make sure that you're doing um, your render uh, accurately so that it looks more photorealistic because if you didn't do it and you had a, a really shallow depth of field with something that is a wide angle it just doesn't look realistic or if you have you know even a normal focal length and it's a uh, you know too shallow of a depth of field on, on something that's kind of large it just makes it look real fake um, and one way to, to kind of take a look at that um, that is faked. Um, think of tilt shift uh, photography, which I'm going to put this in my blog as some 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 examples of tilt shift tilt shift photography, which is an intentional um, faking of this blur. You know, of things that are down here are blurred out, things in here are blurred out, but things in here stay kind of sharp, and uh, that makes big things intentionally look smaller. So in most examples is a um, a picture of uh, a city scene that you can tell it's a city scene and but it looks very, very small. And um, if you if you're going for that, then yeah, that's a that's a tilt shift kind of um, uh, photography that you can do, um, but if you're not going for that and you want something more realistic, then keep bear in mind the the focal length and the aperture size, and keep what you want in focus, and uh, you know play around with the settings, get used to how you're going to do this, um, and just get it right and uh, know what you're going to do. So I think that's about it. Um, I, I can't. I can't find anything else to explain. Um, that's that's pretty much everything about the camera in Blender. I'm gonna go into other things um, at a later time. Um, maybe how I how I created this scene, um, the glass and and the the, the hills in the background. Um, this took me a little bit. I was really proud with uh, you know actually the the main thing I liked was the the sky here. This was really cool of how I created this. Uh, the clouds in the sky and everything, and I'll show that maybe um, in the upcoming weeks, or maybe this week. Um, I'll just go into depth of how to do that. I won't create a full tutorial, but maybe I'll go into you know doing some screenshots. So I hope this uh, you know explains a lot about the camera and gets you interested in using depth of field correctly, and then you can you know use this in your own renders and you know create a good uh, render. So if you have any questions about what I've discussed, um, go ahead and, and reply to my video on, on YouTube or in my blog. 
I'll be glad to answer any questions. Um, if you have anything that you've done with great depth of field, um, I'd love to see it and, um, you know, share it. Uh, you know, post a link on my blog or post a link in, in YouTube, and uh, I'd love to, to take a look at it. So that's it. Um, I hope I've explained it all that I can and, and to where you guys can understand it. And good luck, and uh, you know, go ahead and comment. Thanks. <laughs>